Yo, and so I think um, we start directly. Yeah, with we're gonna start and... with the questions. So, um, we take this. Uh, the first question is: uh, What is your athletic background, and how did you get involved with lifting and fitness? Yeah, it's um, it's a good question because I get that all the time. Um, a lot of people get into fitness, obviously seeing a lot of their role models and, and, and people that train etc for me when i started which is quite a long time ago <laughs> um, um i'm actually 41 years old um so i started about 20 years ago which was very long and i i never really got into it for to be a bodybuilder or fitness model i just i was into sports so playing american football and these sports you have to just get bigger and stronger so I just got into the gym. I was really skinny. I was pretty ripped and, um, and shredded, but I did, just didn't have the size. So playing American football or even running track and playing um, regular football, which uh, we call soccer in, in New York, um, you just have to get a little bit more size, a little bit stronger. So my coach just told me to go into the gym and train. So I just used to go after school and just train all the time. I was never really into bodybuilding or, or fitness at all. Um, I just got into it more um, because I had a group of friends that I used to work with and they used to, we used to do a lot of um, shows in New York like for Adidas, for different malls and stuff like that. I don't know how it's, how it's done here but it was just little modeling gigs here and there, little shows and friend. stuff like that and these guys were like big bodybuilders and they were like, you know, you really should think about doing a show, you really should try it out. And they actually introduced me into that, into doing bodybuilding. So we decided on, just for joke, as, as a group of guys, it was about eight or ten of us. Mm -hmm. We just decided to do a show um, one year. It's a small show. It's like, let's do it. And they're like, I'll show you what to do. I'll show you how to pose. I'll show you. So that was actually my, my introduction into um, bodybuilding and, and fitness. Um, because for me, I was just training just to train. So yeah. If you want to tell Look them. good. <laughs> Ja, ganz grob, er hat Fußball gespielt, war, musste breiter werden, war mit Kollegen, die auch sehr muskulös waren. Hat dann, in Amerika machen die so gewisse Shows für Adidas und Model Shows, wenn du gut aussiehst. Und die waren natürlich alle viel breiter. Und ich sage immer zu, du siehst gut aus, versuch mal eine Show zu machen, so ein bisschen. Dann haben die aus, aus Fun und Joke eine kleine, einen kleinen Wettbewerb gemacht und ja, sieht ganz gut aus. Ja, yeah, um, so we, we decided to actually do that show and um, as a group and just for fun. I think I was a junior at the time, maybe I was 19, 20, and just did my first show. And I actually won the show. Um, so I was just pretty psyched about it. You know, I was pretty s small, to be honest. Um, but um, they, it was a great experience. And I think that was, that was what started it for me because I looked at it like, for me, as more as a motivation. Um, I decided every year I'll pick a show to do just to see how I progress and see how I do every year. That, that forces me to train regularly because I wanted to do a show every year. And, and then I started reading up about, you know, the guys, obviously, legends and people that have done bodybuilding shows back in the days and, and look at different physiques and, and try to assess different physique in, in regards to how I would want to look. So um, in, the, in the early stages, I just was into training more more from a sports background, you know, just doing sports in school, and then it just progressed into, you know, actually picking a show every year and doing a show, which kept me motivated to train and just improve my physique overall. Hmm. Yeah. That's a good intro for the next question. <laughs> <laughs> so, from the earlier years, what are the some of the biggest training mistakes you've made? <laughs> oh man, perfect intro. there's quite a few actually, because um, I always think. Um, a lot of people that start into fitness and bodybuilding make the same mistakes and um, and for me at the time it's a couple of things um, I think a lot of mistakes um, a, a lot of young 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 people make when they get into that is um, it's one is the nutrition they don't learn they don't know much about it when I started I didn't know much about it and whether taking protein what kind of protein when do I take protein when do I take this uh, amino acids it was just at the time, it was more the basics, you know, I mean, this, the supplement game has changed a lot <laughs> in 20 years. I mean, back then, it was just your know, basic um, protein back then. I think way back then, it used to be like a myoplex or something. <laughs> it's just a long time ago. And, um, and, 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 and even 
back then when you had like the creatine and stuff, it was just your basic monohydrate, you know, yeah, yeah, and that was just it, you know. But now it's changed. There's so much different types of creatine. There's different types of protein. There's, so it's um, the the um, the selection now is a lot more more advanced, better quality, etc. But back then, I think I didn't know much about it. So, which actually led me into um, really wanting to learn about it because I really love training. I really, I mean, I was seeing results. People were asking me questions. So I decided to become a personal trainer. Okay. Um, so I think it's learning about the nutrition is very, very important. Um, the other thing too, I think um, that I notice nowadays is like a lot of people start, they train for a little bit and they take time off or they stop. I think a lot of people get, you know, demotivated because they, they don't see results as quick or as fast as they want to see results and they tend to quit um, you know obviously I am I'm pretty big on being dedicated and consistent with your training and nutrition etc so I think a lot of people will do very well if they just continue to train and you know and set goals and obviously achieve those goals um, so I always tell people when you when you start training don't look to get that beach body by the summer you know mm -hmm. what I mean um, just set bigger goals, you know, just look at the, the big picture in regards to how I'm going to look when I'm 25 or how I'm going to look when I'm 30 or 35, you know, because when you set goals like that, you know, then you know you, you're in it for the long haul yeah. as, as opposed to, you know what, I just want to get 20 inch arms by the summer, I don't really care, you know? <laughs> so I think um, setting bigger goals and longer goals um, would really help a lot of the you know young people because I get a lot of people that start training, then they stop. They just you know they but just I think, I think it's, yeah. It is important that you meet time. Yeah. They yeah. think it's one two years. Yeah. But that's the the fact they don't understand that you need time. Patience. You have yeah. to have a lot of patience when you train because um, nothing good comes overnight. It takes a while. You know, it takes a long time on. Um, and again, some people's physique respond differently. You know, someone might see results in two months, three months. Another guy might take him eight months to see results. So um, whatever the time frame is, either way, it involves patience and dedication. So you just have to, you just have to put in the time. And I think that's the most important thing, and be patient. Yeah, but wieder ganz grob, als er angefangen hat, was sehr lange her ist, weil er ist 41, unglaublich. Äh, war natürlich das Supplement, die Welt war ganz anders. Wir hatten vielleicht ein Whey-Protein und ein Monohydrat. Ja, und dann viel Training, viel Zeit, gute Ernährung, gute Supplementierung. Aufpassen. Ne? So. You're 41, wow. Das ist unbelievable. So, next intro to the question. What keeps you motivated after so many years? Um, yeah, that's, um, that's, a, that's another great question. Um, for me, my motivation has changed over the years, obviously, um, just due to my age and due to just going through phases in life. I think um, when I first started, I was just so excited to, to compete and do shows every year. So it was more like I want a better me. I want to better myself. I want to get better. I want to win shows. Um, and then you go through phases, obviously. I'm married. I've got a wife and two kids, etc. So you go through phases where, you know, you want to do better for your family, raise your kids, raise, you know, take care of yourself and make sure you're secure, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, you do that, you go through that phase as well. And now I think more I'm at a phase where I think um, I just appreciate a lot of the motivation now just comes from fans and supporters um, because, um, you know, I've done the bodybuilding show, I've taken care of my family, everyone's cool. So now it's, you know, when I get the emails and, you know, and, and, from people saying, oh man, you know, you've made a positive change in my life. Or I'll get people that send me questions all the time and, and I'll send them, you know, training programs and stuff like that. And they come back and be like, you know, I did the program for eight weeks and it was great. And, you know, I, I think for me, that's what, what keeps me going and keeps me motivated now because it, it just goes to show when I, as, I, as some of you may know, when I started into like the whole um, personal training and helping people I was doing it way before social media and you know like due to my age you know, like I was set telling the guys on the team when I was posting pictures about training and stuff like that there was no Facebook it was I think it was MySpace, MySpace. at the time and uh, I still have that MySpace account 
but it was it was what I was doing. I would post pictures of MySpace and talk about my training, etc. So I was doing it way before Instagram, Snapchat, and all this stuff. Um, so for me now, when you look at it, when people come back, and I have people that's been fo that's followed me for years, you know, and like I, have, I was following you way before, you know, and so it's good because it's a positive change. People see stuff that you're doing, and like you know, I wasn't going to train, but. I saw your video, I saw this, I'm going to go work out now, you know? And I think when you can make a positive change in people's life, for me, that I feel good about that because I always say it's over the years you learn so much and you implement it, you train, you do very well, you win trophies, you do magazines. Yeah, all of that is nice, but if you, if you cannot help others to improve, then what's the yeah. point of learning all this stuff? So for me... I mean, giving back and helping others to improve their life, I mean, that keeps me motivated because I feel good. I'm like, wow, okay, this person did that. I took my time and, you know, yeah. did the program and he followed it and, he, and, he, and he's happy and he's seen results. So I think the motivational factor now for me in regards to what keeps me motivated is the fact that I can make positive changes in people's lives now and it's great. So. The motivation app, is, it just goes through phases. In the beginning, it was, you know, you want to train, you want to get better, and then, you know, you want to take care of your family, and now you, you're making positive changes in people's lives. So for me, it's just grown, and it's just gotten better and better, and I just appreciate all the support, and I think that's what, what makes, it validates what I'm doing, that, you know what, you know, you are, you are helping others with what you've learned, and, and, and that's a good thing, I think. Okay. Yeah. Also, hat am Ende noch mega selber zusammengefasst. Erste Sparte, wollte besser werden, erfolgreicher werden, Familie ernähren und jetzt Menschen motivieren und Menschen helfen. Wird immer noch übersetzt, ne? Also keine Sorgen machen. So. When the first you start competing, you see, you see all the legends or which athlete do you admire and why? Oh man, it's a tough one because um, when I first started competing, looking at um, physiques and stuff. Because, mind you, I was never really into bodybuilding, like watching it before where I was like, oh, I wanted to do that. I had a few uncles that worked out and they were big and stuff, but my dad was more of a runner. So I was, you know, I wasn't really into the bodybuilding lifestyle. But when I got into it, um, for me, I like more the, the aesthetic physique. A lot of the guys from the golden era, I really like their physique um, um, because, you know, it, it was just more aesthetically pleasing. Um, And I used to talk about that. I used to talk about building a great physique. It's not, I, I personally feel a lot of people can get big if they want to get big, you know, but it's, you know, it's, it's how you build your physique, how you're shaped um, and your work ethic, etc. A lot of those guys back in the days had great work ethic. They were training all the time, twice a day sometimes. And, and now you train twice a day, it's like overtraining, you shouldn't do that. But those guys built fantastic physiques from yeah. training like that all the time. So I admire a lot of their work ethic and a lot of um, uh, uh, and a lot of the work they put in and their physique was just more of a pleasant physique where now it's changed a bit. But you still have guys that are big that have very aesthetic physique. So I think it just changes through the phases. But the, the guys that I really like are more like the Frank Zane, the Serge Libre, even Arnold. Arnold had a, for a big guy, had a fantastic shape. So um, the pleasing aesthetic physiques is, is more the kind of physique that I like. And I've kind of, kind of wanted my physique to be that way because I've always said I'm not looking to be the biggest or strongest guy in the gym. I just wanted to build a complete physique. Um, and and uh, you know, I don't think anyone is perfect, but we can all work towards it and, and, and try to have a more balanced physique. I think balance is more the word than perfect, to be honest. Um, because a balanced physique would just look so much better than, you know, just a regular big physique, I believe. Okay. Ja, wie erwartet, natürlich äh, die alten 70er ästhetischen Zeiten. Frank Zane, habe ich mir schon gedacht. Serge Nobre, mega, natürlich. Muskelvolumen ohne Ende. Und selbst Arnold, obwohl er, es waren auch andere Zeiten, obwohl er ein schweren Heavyweight war, hat natürlich eine andere Physik als heutige. Wenn man sich heute einen Kai Green anguckt oder einen Philipp und einen Arnold vergleicht, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's back to, to what I was saying. You get a lot of people that talk about genetics and you know and all that kind of stuff. I'm 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 more of a believer of hard work. You know, um, 
and I'm friends with a lot of these guys from Kai Green to Jay Cutler and all these guys. Um, but I believe hard work it just it, it, there's no substitute really, to be honest, because you get you know I was like I mentioned to the team I was talking to um, Jay Cutler the other day. Uh, I'm good friends with Jay Cutler, but I um, mean when he was competing, I wasn't a big fan of his physique. Um, because I like more the pleasing physique. He more he had more of a powerful physique. You know, he's a big guy. Um, but that being said, when I was having a chat with him, and he was telling me that because he didn't have the aesthetics and you know all the pleasing, pleasing lines, etc., his margin of error when he did a show was pretty much zero. He knew he had to do everything in order to win. And you had the guys that had the pleasing physiques like the Sean Ray, Flex Wheeler, that looked nice, etc. I, I think their work ethic may not have been as good as um, Jay, um, Jay Cutler. And it goes to show, it's hard work. You know, when you look at those pleasing physiques, you're like, wow, Flex Wheeler, Sean Ray, and this and that. But they have no Olympia titles. <laughs> Jay Cutler has four. So it just goes to show with work ethic, you know, I mean, and the same thing can be said for Dorian Yates. Doesn't have a pleasing physique, he's not, you know, but he's still Olympia many times over. Because it just goes to show, it, it's, for me, it's more about work ethic, work ethic, work ethic. If you have that and you have the dedication and the drive, you can really achieve it. The guys that may have the great genetics, great lines and this and that would have that, but do they have the work ethic to match and do, in can, can can you can you see that you see so that's the that's the difference i always strive to work hard hard work beats talent it does yeah. it really does <laughs> so that's a question you never heard all this week where does your famous quote dedication has no limitation come from <laughs> dedication has no limitation it, it really goes back to when i was training back in new york um the guys at the gym, I used to go to a gym called 24-7 Fitness, which was down in Chamber Street. I believe it's still there. Um, a lot of us uh, in New York at the time used to go to that gym, like um, Kai Green and all those guys. Um, we used to train there all the time. But I, I used to go there and they, they always knew I was dedicated. Um, and even um, one of the guys that used to work there, um, I think I went there, it was around the holiday time, Christmas time whether it was Christmas or New Year around that time and basically no one was at the gym you know <laughs> and um, I used to just go put on my hoodie I literally live like five eight minute walk from there so I, it's snow I'll just go and walk and go to the gym and train but he started that he used to actually say your your dedication has no limits it has no limitation and I kind of just switched it around to dedication, I have no limitation. But he goes, your limitation, your, your dedication has no limits. And he used, to, he used to say it all the time, over and over and over. So I had that quote in mind um, for many years, and um, I just decided to use it. Um, uh, but copyright it, now? Yeah, it's trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> but, it. um, but back then, when you think about it, um, it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't about selling t-shirts or whatever. It was just, I would be in there day in and day out just to train, just to train, just to train, just to train. Even, you know, when I got married and kids, I was always training. I was, it's what I did anyway. So for me, I always said training, going to the gym was like my, my kind of therapy. It was my outlet, my little therapy. So um, I did that regardless. So everyone literally just use that phrase on me when I was okay. there all the time, yeah. <laughs> Deep. <laughs> so, go to the next question. Mm -hmm. so what is the most common training question that people ask you? Oh, uh, yeah. I think um, for me in regards, um, in regards to training, there's several, couple of them. Mainly it's um, what's like my favorite um, body part to train. That's one of the most common questions oh. I get. Yes. Um, people can always think, you know, it's abs or it's my arms or it's my back. Um, to be honest, I don't really, one of the things I, I try to do when I first started or maybe even to the second year of my training was try not to have a favorite body part because I wanted, when you have a favorite body part, you tend to train it more frequently than you do. So I just tend to, I go through phases. I don't really necessarily have a favorite. I try to balance everything out. 
Um, but one of the tips I used to always give um, was that every eight to 12 weeks, I would assess my physique. I would look at it in the mirror and say, okay, um, for the next um, eight weeks or 12 weeks, I'm gonna hit this muscle part twice. Um, I call it like a wild card day. So I train everything from you know every muscle group once a week, but there's one muscle group I would train again and I usually used to focus on my week one. So whether it was hamstrings at the time or hamstrings and calves, I'll do that again. Whether it was shoulders, I'll do that again. You know, whether it was just quads, I'll do that again. So I did that every eight weeks, I would train a muscle group twice. I'll pick, I'll just pick a muscle group and train it. I think it helped me a lot to just balance my physique out yeah. because in the first year of training, I didn't like doing legs. I think a lot of people <laughs> maybe might, <laughs> might probably relate, especially when you first started, you know, 18, 19, you just want to train chest all the time, yeah. you know, biceps. And, and that's it, chest and biceps, that was like my favorite, but I realized that you, you cannot just do chest and biceps every day, you know, you have to mix it up, so um, the first year of training, I, I did legs, but it was like once a month, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I had to change that, so my second year of training, I was doing legs twice a week, all the time and really I had to balance my physique out so I always say if you if, if you assess your physique and pick your weak, your weak body part and train that twice a week change it train it again change it train it again it would really help you also if you if you put your the, the body parts you don't like to train early in the week I used to always do like legs and back because you know you don't see your back and you never want to like, you can't flex it that much, so you don't train it that much. I ch made sure Monday and Tuesday was ch chest, and I mean it was legs and, 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 and back, which is very hard because they're the two biggest muscle groups, you know, and, and to train them back to back is really taxing, but I forced myself to do that, and it made me really, really enjoy doing legs, it made me enjoy doing back, because I knew I would do chest and arms on a Thursday, Friday, I didn't mind, you know, but if you That's did it, weekend. yeah, if you did it on Monday and Tuesday, if you did chest and arms Monday and Tuesday, most likely you're going to skip legs on Friday yeah. <laughs> because you want to hang out. So I, I always did the reverse. I always did the reverse and I always wanted to balance it out. Yeah. Also ganz grob gesagt, er hat keine Lieblingsgruppe, die er trainiert. Alle acht Wochen schaut er sich an im Spiegel und sieht, was verbesserungswürdig seiner Meinung ist und trainiert den Part dann zweimal die Woche. Das heißt, verbessert. So, the next question is, uh, yeah, so good question. What is your daily routine? Um, my daily routine, due to my schedule, I'm pretty busy. As you guys know, I travel a lot and I do a lot of work for sponsors and I have my own personal business and stuff. So it's really tough sometimes just being on the road and having like a your normal diet and, and staying with stuff. But when I'm home, my routine is just pretty normal, you know, I'll get up in the morning. I'm a big fan of doing like fasted core in the morning. I wake up in the morning and do my core exercises. Um, I find that over the years that's worked great for me. Um, I'm able to contract my abs a, a lot more when I train them on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. Um, it's no different from doing fasted cardio in the morning, etc. It's hard, but for me I've trained my body a lot to um, to just do that. So I'll wake up in the morning, especially if I have like a shoot coming up or a function or, f or photo shoot, etc. Even when I don't have it, I'll do it a couple times a week, you know. But when I do have it, I'll try to do it every day or every other day. Um, so that's usually my routine. I wake up, I'll have um, do my fasted um, fasted core exercises. Then I'll have um, my protein shake, it's usually at ISO, ISO Way Zero. Um, and protein and oats in the morning, it's standard. Um, it's a bit boring because I, I don't really get fancy with my stuff. It's just plain oats and water. <laughs> I'm just so used to it. Um, and then, you know, I usually train midday or mid afternoon. So around two o'clock is when I usually do my training session from like two to four. Um, so I would make sure I have um, lunch around 12. Um, and then um, and then I'll go to train. Um, what's also very important for me is uh, my post workout, um, which again consists of um, 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 protein and some oats. Mm -hmm. I love having the oats um, in my shake. I actually add that on there, um, slow release, and then I'll take all my nutrients as well, antioxidants, etc., um, BCAA zero, and all that stuff. So 
I just usually make sure I get in as much nutrient and, 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 and supplements and my food as much as possible. Um, because usually when I'm traveling, it's, it's just very hard. I usually have the supplements with me, but it's hard to get proper food, you know what I mean, on the road all the time. That being said with supplement, I'm a firm believer that food is king. You have to eat first. So I get in three to four meals a day, but I always make sure I get in my couple of shakes, which is uh, my two important shakes, which is my post-workout shake after I train and um, my morning shake. Because usually you wake up in the morning from six or eight hours, you've been fasting, I would say, because you haven't eaten anything. Um, I drink a shake right away because it, you know the body doesn't have to um, break it down it just absorbs it right away so I get get in two shakes a day I get in my um, my four meals a day and I do my training session usually around two in the afternoon right. it's usually um, what I do when I'm looking to add a little bit more size etc I'll increase my caloric intake obviously um, days that I do like back and legs I'll increase my carb intake so my lunch would be a much bigger lunch around 12 before I train um, and then also, before I go to bed, I'll take the extra um, calories in. So I'll take in like a casein shake before I go mm -hmm. in. Yeah, so I just, I just, I'm mindful of when I train heavy muscle groups or when I'm doing the compound exercises, I increase obviously my, my, my diet a bit. Um, I increase my food. And then also I make sure I take the extra protein at night. Again, this is very important because, you know, it keeps me from not eating bad. I mean, I think... I mean, I'm so used to it now, so it's normal, but I think for a lot of people starting out, it's very hard, you know, to like be very dedicated to like taking the shakes, eating normal, getting the extra protein at night. I mean, I remember times when I was really competing and wanting to get bigger. I used to wake up in the middle of the night and mix a shake. I really did. I would set my timer and I would wake up and I would already have it in there. I would have the oats in there. I would have the banana in there. I'll just pour the milk and blend it, drink it, and I'll just go right back to sleep. So um, I've done that for years when I was just trying to get bigger and just I would do anything just to get the extra calories in. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it's just part of dedication. Now I, I train just to maintain. I enjoy it, and it's just more. It's just, it's just fun. It's just my lifestyle. Um, but, you know, there's sacrifices sometimes you make when you're just doing a show and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, my daily routine is, is, is a bit boring, actually. It's your standard um, bodybuilding lifestyle, but I love it. It's what I do, you know. <laughs> just no spicy thing, no <laughs> avocado shakes with cumin. No, <laughs> nah, it's pretty standard. <laughs> just oats and yeah, isolate. But, but like I was saying, you know, I have two kids and um, like Friday night is movie night and I order pizza for them and stuff. It, I eat, so if I'm, I would have a pizza, slice of pizza with my kids. I'm, I'm not really like just like that, you know. I would have a normal, normal meal if I have to. If I go out to dinner with the wife or even with the friends, I'll have a normal meal. I think it's just I'm very mindful of portion control. I wouldn't have the whole pizza. You know? <laughs> I wouldn't go crazy. Um, I just, I'm just portion control. I'm just more sensible with that. I think the combination of being very sensible with that and also training all the time doesn't really affect me so i can have a normal meal and just and just crack on and be normal and get back to my training yeah. mm -hmm. so die letzten zwei fragen haben wir noch natürlich äh, die wichtigsten fragen uh, the last two questions uh, yeah. you have this uh, biotech usa mm -hmm. corporation yeah uh, tell us how is cut <laughs> take next take. <laughs> you know they were filming. <laughs> you have launched your own product with collaboration of Biotech. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about it. Yeah, look, um, my my, um, my collaboration with Biotech has been great. Um, Biotech, I've known for years actually, even before they contacted me. Like I was telling the guys. Um, I think in like in 2000 or 1999, they used to have the massive amino acids, mm. the really big one, and I used to take them all the time. So I've, I've known biotech way back. Um, when they contacted me to work, it was great because um, I just like their setup. Their products are very good, um, but one of the things that did it for me is that you they actually manufacture their own stuff. The 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 the, the 
the, the, the products, they really research it and they, they do their, you get a lot of companies, I've worked with different companies as you guys may know, they, they formulate the stuff but then they give it to another company to, to produce it and make it etc. So it goes through different hands, you know what I mean? Where biotech is all in-house, they do their own research, they do their own stuff, they produce their own stuff. Um, and, 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 and it's great stuff. So I actually like that, you know, they can't say, okay, this company made my stuff and I sent it yeah. to that one. So everything is in-house and, and I like the way they, they set up their, their, their business. So it worked really well for me. We had a chat about it. Um, we decided to do Shaper, obviously. Um, one of the things, because you get a lot of stuff in the market now that, you know, you take and it just gives you the buzz and the jittery and all that kind of stuff. With Shaper, it's, it's, it's really more like an appetite suppressant. It, it helps you from your cravings and all that kind of stuff. And it doesn't give you the jitters and all that stuff. So we wanted to introduce something that was just mild, that everyone can use. There's no harm in it. Anyone can take Shaper. And there's nothing in this, your normal amino acids, etc. But the formulation is just slightly different from your normal other brands, and etc. So it's really good. Um, and we have um, other products in line that we're going to bring, bring out. So um, the collaboration has been very good um, and it's worked out really well. So um, yeah, I'm part of the biotech family and um, so I'm sure a lot of you have tried their products and, and stuff. But a lot of the stuff is good. I mean, I love like the BCAA, mm -hmm. the, the cola flavor. It's cola amazing. Flavor. Yeah, the Coca-Cola is, is great. I tell people like even when I'm dieting um, for whether, whatever event that I'm doing, some of the stuff I do, I, I used to do when I was competing. I still do it nowadays. For example, to stop sugar craving at night because late night is when you really get that, that craving and you want to eat something. I would, because I love the, the cola, the BCAA cola, it just really tastes like Coke, mm -hmm. to be honest. I, I would put it in the ice tray mm -hmm. and put the toothpick in there and make it into like a popsicle. And when I get the craving, I just have a BCAA popsicle. Mm -hmm. It's really, so it's just stuff like that, what I would do when I was competing to stop sugar cravings. Because the product is so good, and now even the bars, the, the, yeah. the zero bars are amazing. So um, it, for me, their, their product is quality. Um, I like the way they run their business. They do everything very professionally and it's very in-house and they also produce their own stuff, you know, so they don't go to another company to do it. So all of that is, is a win-win for me and, and, and it's been a great collaboration with them. Okay. So, let's vary. Last question. Yeah. Who would you recommend the Shaper? Uh, well, like I said, with Shaper, um, anyone can take Shaper. There's no side effects. You can take it for a long term. Um, so, you know, with a lot of the supplements, because of some of the ingredient it has in there and the formula it has in there, you can maybe take it for a little bit of time, then you got to stop. And, you know, it, some people, it doesn't work with them because, you know, their body just don't take well to certain things. With Shaper, you don't have any of those side effects. You don't have any of the jitteries. You don't have any of the problems. So, you know, even I was, I had a client with um, that has diabetes, and he's taking Shaper, and he has no problem with it. So, anyone can take it. Any age can take it, obviously, um, because it doesn't have any of the side effects stuff that's going to cause any problems or yeah, downs, so. yeah. So it's it's great. I think it's recommended across the board, and um, and that's what I wanted. Something safe and easy that can relate to everyone, and everyone can take it. And I take it in the morning um, mm -hmm. when I even sometimes before I do my fasted core, I wake up, I drink my shaker, relax, do my core session, and then I'll have my zero or my coffee or whatever. Okay. So it works pretty well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure to have you here. I still want to meet everyone. Obviously, um, we can obviously be able to take some shots. And if you have any individual questions, you can ask me when we do the, the pictures, etc. So, again, guys, thank you so much for coming out. And I really appreciate the support. I really do. Thank you very much. I really... Thank you. I was, I was, as I was saying before to the team, I do a lot of the big expos. Obviously, I was at FIBO. I do Olympia and, and the Arnold and all this stuff. And it's, it's great to do those shows because you get thousands and thousands of people that come. But I actually appreciate these kind of settings 
because you know people can ask you with the expo it's like 10 seconds you shake hands you take a picture you go yeah. um but here you you know you really get in the questions we took a lot of the questions down that we got and we really you know wanted to get a lot of the popular questions and plus you know meeting doing the the pictures now with you guys i can actually talk to people and have time to really relate with people with at the expos you, it's very hard you know you don't you know, people cannot really judge you because you're just there for 10 seconds. So these kind of, I appreciate it. I know it, it takes time for you, obviously, to leave work and come here. And I have to travel here. But I really enjoy coming to the private visits like this. Because it's, it's it, you get to just meet people that support you and, and over the years. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.